Yes, my name is Saeed King, and I am a teacher at the Philadelphia Juvenile Justice Service Center. And I'll end, uh, Councilwoman Gimlin, just thank you, thank you very much uh, for leading the charge on getting this law passed. Yes, again, I am from the Juvenile Justice Service Center, and we see approximately 1,500 kids, and that's not including the summer, in the course of a year. We have three times more boys than girls, and the average student at our center is it, there roughly about 35 days. And while they're there for 35 days, their time served, whatever time they're going to be sent, it doesn't start until they actually leave. So if you have a kid that is there for 35 days or even longer, and they're sent away for four months, they sent away for four months, so they actually did, let's say if it was three months, so they okay. actually did, in total seven months, where they had maybe had a four-month charge. Uh, at our program, students, they actually receive credit towards graduation. They actually attend school. And our program consists of a phenomenal C-Tech um, vocational program that we um, just started in the past couple of years, where students are able to learn about fiber optics, copper wiring, we have an audio visual program, uh, we learn about energy management. Our goal is to prepare them for the workforce. So when they leave, they have a, they're able to have a second chance. When I think of these uh, students that come there, um, some of them come from impoverished backgrounds. Just because they come from a impoverished background does not mean that they are stupid. So as a teacher there, I just not only teach my subject matter, but I actually teach life as well. That's the goal, to reduce recidivism and keep them from uh, returning. So I opened up um, a lesson um, this past um, week about and one just to get their voices in. I actually got told what I was going to be doing here today, and I'm um, just run out a couple bullets of what the kids are saying. When it comes to ban the box, they said uh, ban the box for juveniles should be enforced because it get it gives them uh, it makes way for their future. It also they said that expunge the expungement process it takes too long. They said charges based on a, an adult mindset instead of a child mindset. They make mistakes as children, and we know that the, in the development of the brain is not, not the same versus uh, the, the brain of an adult. They also said they are uh, being judged based on their environment, the environment that they're coming from, because some of them have felt victims to be product of their environment, they're being judged on that. They also said that the lack of, there is a lack of opportunities for teenagers. And because there's a lack of opportunity for teenagers, they tend to fall victim of the circumstances around them. They also said that the box, it stands in their way, and it actually hindered the vision of their future. And one of the students was very uh, illustrative in trying to explain it. And it said, she said pretty much, the box is there, they know that they have committed a crime, so what's the use? All the work they had, they had put in at the center and had gained certifications in the CTEC program, what's the use if you're gonna judge me before I even get an interview? So, um, the rejection of this law um, if this law is rejected, this bill is rejected, uh, which I, I pray that it's not, it will be a slap in the face to all the hard work that these students have put in and try to make a difference in their lives. So um, if I can close out, I will end on a, a quote from a mentor of mine. Each of us need all of us, and all of us need each of us. So with the passing of this bill, it will validate the voice of the youth and it will give them hope that they really need something. Yes.
Yes. I just, I, I especially just want to acknowledge you and uh, your principal, Deanna Ramsey, and of course the presence of Tamin Fraga uh, for inspiring us to pursue this legislation in the first place. I think that was uh, extremely moving and um, a really powerful conversation. And we just really want to thank you for your dedicated work and leadership on behalf of our young people. So, so, I'm ready for this challenge, and I 